And there are so many elements at the beginning, like these little uh, uh, stories with several characters and all comes together kind of like uh, in a random way and fun way. So what was at the beginning the, the genesis of the, of the project and the, the first ideas that you wanted to, to explore? Uh, I came home to my place one day and wrote a little scene. We had been working on something else together, and uh, mm -hmm. a scene included three of the characters mm -hmm. um, from the coffee shop, Shane and Carl and Tyrone, and right. I uh, sent it off to Jim in London mm -hmm. and said, I don't know what this is, but if mm -hmm. you, you're inspired by anything, send something back, and he wrote a continuing scene mm -hmm. uh, that day, mm -hmm. introducing another character or two, and then we just went from there and let the characters in this world uh, mm -hmm. guide us. To, to what you see on that screen. Right. To the yeah, it's quite fun actually to... Normally when you write a script, you sort of, you know, you have ideas that sort of occur to you and then you, uh, you have that moment where you decide whether you will or you will not commit to mm -hmm. it because it takes time. <laughs> um, and then with this, it was, it was just decided for me because it was, yeah receiving a scene and then just writing something and then just like okay I'm into this I'm into this tone and it's making me laugh and I like <laughs> the fact that I don't know why I'm doing it or where it's going right and it seems like in this world and also from your previous film that there's no room from for characters that are not a, a bit uh, extravagant so I would say that uh, what what do you think about that sort of uh, yeah feel? Well, yeah, no, there's some truth to that. Uh, I just feel that um, there's no point in having a character who is in any way forgettable. Um, so, so far, that's what I've done is just try to try to make them as um, memorable and distinctive as possible. But you know, we both we both feel like that with this with this film. Dave was, you know, he was. Uh, we'd talk about every casting decision and I, I share like casting links with him so he'd watch everything too and we'd talk about everybody and we just get we you know we get a kick, kick out of the same people I mean it's it's just you don't you don't have many opportunities to make feature films and so to me it's like mm -hmm. why the fuck would you make something that's totally fucking normal <laughs> <laughs> anything you you want to agree on I uh, know it was just like that. I mean, it's you know, it was my first time really co-writing with somebody, and all the way through, and being a part of the po the you know the all the casting and all that, and um, there was no, it was just seamless. You know, it was uh, the same taste, and and um, you know, we had and also we had been writing this before the Greasy Strangler, so there was I was also sort of watching that come to to to, mm -hmm. to the screen and. The, you know, there were some characters in that that we had both discovered together and, you know, mm -hmm. actors and, and stuff. And so we had a similar taste in, in mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in, uh, there was no hiccups in, in the process. So, right. And it was exciting, you know, because, uh, in fact, there was one character um, who's in the, who made it in the movie, an actor who was probably the, the, one of them, he, he had shown me the reel of this guy and he'd looked mm -hmm. at him before. I'm not gonna tell you that. <laughs> and uh, I remember we'd have these lists of, of all the uncasted actors and right. I put this His guy. name was for every <laughs> single character <laughs> in the film. And he no, was probably it was for most of the uncasted, but it was just right. I just I was really uh, and he ended up in I think he's amazing. But he was right. definitely the most uh, un uh, unconventional conventional yeah. of the lot. Right. He didn't know what a mark was. He didn't know where to yeah. stand. He was very, very nervous. <laughs> but yeah. you know, it was interesting to, uh, and and quite um, anxiety-inducing, but to mix experienced actors with um, very right. inexperienced. And in that sense, I think my favorite is Jemaine Clement. Uh, so, how was to work with him? And if you were already a, a big fan of his work, especially with Taika. Um. Well, I I think I think with Jermaine, like a, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm like a like a you know I'm not like one of those sort of devotees of like Flight of the Concords or <laughs> whatever. But it's more like I've kind of you know I I had seen I'd seen him in a in a you know in a 
quite a few different things and had always been interested in I, I guess I like just you know there's a, like his look but also his um, talent and feeling like maybe I could take him in a different direction and be and, and I was interested in him playing a more vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, character um, and how is he to work with I mean he's you know he doesn't stop thinking he's uh, we would we would definitely have times where we would be sort of sparring about how to approach even one line or like a or like I can remember um, there's a scene where Shane is back at home with um, mm -hmm. with Carl and Tyrone and then Colin approaches the house and then Lulu played by Aubrey she appears and 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 I had this massive conversation that went on and on with Jermaine about when Aubrey's character should go up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> the timing. Uh, yeah, and it was <laughs> funny, you know. Uh, he's he thinks very hard about stuff. He's very he thinks very hard about the logic. But he, he, but that's also brilliant. I mean, he's very very clever, very inventive. And also, you really, really see it when you watch the dailies and when you start mm. editing. It's like there's a lot, there's so much to take in when you're filming, and certainly with a very tight schedule. And it's like you're just you're just going with a feeling, and you're going with an instinct. And definitely with Jermaine watching watching the dailies back, it was like, wow, man, he really <laughs> he really fucking smashed it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's not so many places you can go to find that type of actor. Right. And then, uh, I mean, the Greasy Strangler, you know, the audience knew from the beginning who was. There was no time for... for there was no, no surprise or tension. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And here is much more enigmatic with, um, with the character of uh, Craig, yeah. Craig Robinson. And how, how was this element of mystery too? How was it put together to, to the film? Um, well, I think that we, you know, like to, to us, it was just sort of, it was just hysterical. I mean, that's genuinely the word, I think, for it, that we would just laugh so much about having this character that didn't say anything and only made this noise, and everybody would be going on about how he was the most brilliant, yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant man that they'd ever met, you know? We just, we just found it so so funny it was just a, it was just it was fantastic and and then to work with to work with Craig and you know he's so capable and so so reliable and so, such a strong actor and even like a really strong dramatic actor I think as well you know he's, he's very well known for comedy but um, yeah it was sort of fascinating to, to have to have his character have these different facets and to uh, mm -hmm to bring that to life but yeah the sort of mysterious aspects of it is that's <laughs> kind of the whole that's kind of the whole film really I think it's all about it's all about identity and mystery and uh, but then you know it's kind of funny as well <laughs> you want to add to yeah no no I just think that's the whole you know um, yeah I mean just that, that, that everyone is sort of um, such a so so um self-important and determined that their story of the way things are in their world is absolutely the way it is even though it it hinges very much on other characters so mm -hmm. you have everyone you know 100 right but needing mm -hmm. each other and so that's where the chaos and and then here's this guy that doesn't say a word or doesn't have an opinion on anything mm -hmm. he doesn't he doesn't even he, he's just showing up and mm -hmm. everyone is you know projecting what what He's, yeah, he's, he's sort of like dressed in these, you know, like a really quite a sort of um, ostentatious <laughs> costume, you know, outfit yeah. when he first turns up at the hotel. And, but he's, it's like he's being, you know, he's, he, he's, heavily he's being, monitored. being micromanaged by somebody else who's leading him to, up the stairs, <laughs> pushing him over here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And since your first film, it was this comparison, the quirky indie comedies like uh, Jared Hess, Wes Anderson, but this time I feel like there's some Wes Anderson in it, particularly in the com confrontation at the hotel, when there's like this fight, the timing, he's sort of uh, like you punch this one and then you punch that one, like sort of reminding me of Budapest Hotel, so... Yeah, I haven't seen the Budapest oh, Hotel, okay. yeah, maybe I'm connected to him, or consciousness <laughs> 
But yeah. what do you think about this um, this comparison with with Wes Anderson and Jared Hess and this quirky? I think that that's you know honestly, I think that's to me that feels like it's quite a sort of um, and I you know you're not American, no. but it feels like quite <laughs> an American attitude to me to mm -hmm. be grouped in with those directors. They're not like mm -hmm. you know my influences are. I mean I'm probably mm -hmm. watch a lot more world cinema and mm -hmm. you know stuff from other places or whatever it's like you know the all I can think of is that it's just actually more of a reflection on the fact that there aren't that many filmmakers who seem to care about how they costume their characters you know so mm -hmm. you've got you're picking two other directors who who create quite specific worlds mm -hmm. I don't know right yeah what do you think <laughs> yeah I mean I think it's also just <laughs> less about being overtly influenced and more about there's just more a dearth of, of well-known mm -hmm. well-known directors that um, that are making very bold specific choices in their production design and their wardrobe and things like that mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's more and, and successfully doing it mm -hmm. I mean I'm sure people are doing it that, that it kind of just ends up being more about trying to be different mm -hmm. than it is about um, you know all the other things that make it sort of feel really authentic mm -hmm. so I think it's how do you you know where do you go to compare and those are the kind of guys that mm -hmm. are at least in states that mm -hmm. have made a, made that mark you know with I mean I, I feel like you know when I think of someone like Wes Anderson it's very much like it feels like a very sort of like controlled world mm -hmm. you know and like the way that the camera moves and the, the characters speak and like everything is like incredibly controlled mm -hmm. and with this I don't feel like that's how I work at all I feel like there's much more space there's much more humanity and it's it's feels like it, it feels like it's just got more uh, yeah more humanity and emotion and life to it. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that scene at the end with the fight because the right. truth of the matter is <laughs> that shooting that actual night was the most, mm -hmm. the, was one of the hardest scenes mm -hmm. to shoot. We had a couple cameras, it was the only time we really had that, maybe one other scene. And so that fight was being shot at four in the morning and hurried and everyone having to rem remember all this choreography. So it almost <laughs> was a result of the circumstances uh, yeah. as opposed to we want to create this. Yeah. So that yeah. is really about people just trying to remember almost mm -hmm. like this is when I hit you. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, um, it's quite sort of straightforward the way that it's done. But like, if I, you know, if I had a bigger budget and more time, I'd have spent 12 hours shooting that <laughs> fight scene and it would have looked right. very, very different. You'd be talking about Raging Bull. <laughs> <laughs> And so finally, uh, I mean, in the in Grease Strangler, there was this uh, romantic element since the beginning, but in the end, it's the girl kind of like becomes part of this absurdity and uh, violence and everything. This time, it's way more much uh, sweet and even I would say a little bit uh, mature in the sense that you create a character that sort of takes care of her and she uh, likes that and bad is that so what do you think about that yeah i think that's true um i think they're very very different films and um you know they they both satisfy me in sort of different ways but uh the greasy strangler was you know i find it like it i find it really really funny that that film exists and that mm -hmm. i was kind of somehow i was allowed to make that and do that and um and I would enjoy that in a certain way, but with this film, I feel like it was a, a much more challenging film, this one, to make, and to try to, you know, it was really the challenge of the film was to try to um, successfully combine the, you know, the sort of uh, peculiar nature of, of the world and the characters with the, you know, with the heart and the emotion mm -hmm. in the film, and that's, you know, that was the that was the challenge and that was the, and and that's what i found most satisfying about making it i mean like what i really came away from with from making this film was that um i, I felt very moved when we shot certain scenes i think we both did and and that was by far the most 
um, in, you know, satisfying experience of anything I've ever done. Yeah. I mean, it was also what, 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 when, when we were writing it, we, mm -hmm. we knew it was a real, you know, it was ambitious to try and mm -hmm. put in the, the, the level of stakes of emotion that comes off at the end with mm -hmm. this wild world and comedy. Yeah. That we knew that when we were writing, we wanted it to feel that way. You know, mm -hmm. that it wasn't like, oh, wow, that's really serious, Jim, are you sure? You know, it was, that's what we, we wanted it to mm -hmm. go to that place. Yeah. Right? And, and even the risk of losing I love that audiences, yeah, you know, because audiences don't don't mm -hmm. want to sometimes go to. They want to know, and they want to be in a safe place, and they don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to go uh, somewhere they didn't expect to go. And usually, it's a great thing when they do because they leave and they think about it a lot longer. But it can make people uncomfortable. But I feel like that's the most you know I surprising agree. thing about this film is that hopefully it does connect with people emotionally, you know, yeah. in a way that surprises them.